Lee Rigby murder. Facebook could have picked up killer's message. Report. Internet companies face intense demands to monitor messages on behalf of the state for signs of terrorist intent after an official report into the death of Fusilier Lee Rigby said one of his killers wrote on a website, later named as Facebook, of his desire to slaughter a soldier without the security services knowing. The report said the authorities were never told that one of the killers, Michael Adebola, wrote of his murderous intent six months before he and his accomplice, Michael Adebolagio, brutally attacked Rigby in May 2013 in a street near his military barracks and attempted to behead him. Now this is a perfect problem, reaction, solution scenario playing out right in front of our very eyes. And sadly, the general public, despite it being right in front of our faces, will not cotton on to it at all. As we know, GCHQ and the equivalent in America, the NSA, have been getting loads of bad press recently because of the leaked Edward Snowden documents. People have been angry and questioning why they need to monitor everything we do online. After all, America and the UK are free countries, aren't they? A couple of years ago, the government came up with a bill that was dubbed the Snoopers Charter because it basically involved the government officially. Remember, they're doing all this unofficially. They just need to come out and tell you they're doing it officially. Logging everything we do online and keeping it indefinitely. They do it, so we are told, to keep us safe. The bill was rejected because there are still a handful of good people in government who don't want to live beyond Orwell's 1984. Then, on May the 13th, 2013, Lee Rigby was murdered on the streets of London by two trendy Muslims with knives. A couple of days ago, a report into the incident has been published saying that one of the killers said on Facebook six months before the killing that he was going to kill a soldier. We are now told that Facebook didn't pass this information on to the security services, and if they had done so, then Lee Rigby may not have been killed. I've looked at the Lee Rigby murder, and I have to say there are some huge anomalies. For example, here are a few. How can a car hit a lamppost at 30 plus miles an hour, causing no damage to the lamppost, not even scratching it? How can Rigby have been thrown only two feet from a car bonnet when physics said if a car is stopping at 30 to 40 miles an hour instantly, something on the bonnet will fly 40 to 60 feet? How come two people filmed the ramp from one of the killers when we're told it was only filmed by one person? How come the kids opposite in the bus said that they were watching a film scene being filmed? So many questions, but as per 7-7, we won't get any answers to them. So in the coming weeks and months, just listen out to the calls by MPs, commentators, so-called journalists and many others to have everything you and I do online surveilled. Because, they will tell us, if we don't let the government know everything we're doing online, where we're going, what websites we visit, who we're calling on our phones, then another person may die. Let's just forget the fact that the government took part in killing 60,000 innocent people in Libya. Let's forget that our government took part in killing over a million Iraqis to liberate them. Let's forget that 179 soldiers died defending the interests of corporations in Iraq. Let's forget that the EU along with America caused the overthrow of a democratically elected regime in Ukraine, killing thousands in the process. Let's forget that Cameron, via NATO, has been arming ISIS and Al-Qaeda, resulting in hundreds of thousands of deaths globally, including hundreds of thousands of Christians. Let's forget that if a killing like Lee Rigby was done on the streets of Syria, then David Cameron would be applauding it. Also forget that MI5 offered one of Rigby's killers a job. Also forget that over 10,000 people die needlessly in the NHS because our government cares more about bankers than people. Also forget that superbugs in dirty hospitals kill thousands a year. Make sure you forget that flu kills 12,000 a year. And also forget that 1,700 people are killed on our roads every year. But more importantly, make sure you forget that tracking everyone everywhere 
and monitoring all our internet use is what the establishment has wanted all along. You see, if they had come out and officially tracked and traced everyone from the get-go, there would have been an uprising. People simply would not have had it. But now, they've created the problem, they're offering the solution. We'll have to track and monitor everything everybody does, because someone was killed somewhere and we can't have that again. After all, you've got nothing to hide, have you? Where does this stop? We cannot allow the government to monitor everything we do because we simply cannot trust the government. Who watches the watchers? Remember, the type of people that will have access to all of your information are the type of people who film children being abused in boys' homes to try and catch MPs in the act so they can bribe them. And I mean, I mean, I was... I was raising in Parliament against Mrs. up against Mrs. Thatcher, the Kinkora Boys Home, where boys were being abused and MI5 was filming it because they were hoping to be able to blackmail senior politicians in Northern Ireland. They were hoping to catch one of Ian Pace's MPs, and they never did, um, and give themselves some leeway. So the truth is there's been an awful lot of covering up of paedophiles and paedophile rings for decades and decades. Does it make you feel safe and secure knowing that the same people who covered up for Jimmy Savile, Cyril Smith, Leon Britton, Peter Wrighton and all the other Westminster pedos will have access to all of your data? If you think that's a good thing and you would happily hand over everything to these paedophile protectors then you are insane and there is simply no hope for you.